The New Kingdom, 18th to 20th Dynasties, 1550 to 1070 BCE. Soon after 1580 BCE, the Egyptian princes of Thebes succeeded in expelling the Hyksos and liberating the country. This began the period of Egyptian history known as the Empire Age. Once again there was a reunification and the pharaohs consciously revived the traditions of the early 12th dynasty. Art regained the traditional aesthetic it had possessed during the reign of King Senwasret I. For almost 500 years, the country was enriched by victorious wars like the campaigns of Thutmose III and Ramses II. Egypt enjoyed a period of prosperity and building activity unmatched in its history. Innumerable stone temples and rock-cut tombs were built, many of which are still standing in Egypt today. The 18th Dynasty, 1550 to 1307 BCE. Egypt was freed from the Hyksos by Amos, ruler of Thebes. His victorious military campaigns extended Egypt's borders. Egypt spread north across all of Palestine and parts of Syria to the Euphrates and Orontes rivers. In the south, the empire reached the fourth cataract, some 500 miles south of Aswan. All of the early kings of the dynasty up to Amenhotep III played some part in these wars. Military operations were lessened during the reign of King Hatshepsut, wife and half-sister of Thutmose II, who was appointed regent during the minority of her nephew, Thutmose III. She was not satisfied with merely being a regent. She appointed herself pharaoh and reigned for 22 years in Thutmose's stead. She can be seen in temple reliefs, dressed as a man before her ancestral deities fulfilling the pharaoh's responsibilities. She chose to focus on the internal development of Egypt instead of military expansion. Together, Hatshepsut and Thutmose III united the priesthoods of Egypt under her own vizier, Hapu Seneb. After Hatshepsut's death, Thutmose III resumed the military policies of his ancestors. He went on to become a renowned warrior. Much of the wealth of Egypt's military conquests had been donated to Egypt's central temples. During the reign of Thutmose III's grandson, Amenhotep III, these donations had greatly increased the power and wealth of the priesthood of Amun at Karnak Temple. The priesthood's power became so extensive that it began to interfere with the activities of the royal house. Partly in response to the priest's rising power, Amenhotep III began enacting profound cultural changes regarding the idea of the divinity of the king. His son, Akhenaten, and his queen, Nefertiti, expanded upon these ideas and effectively limited the priesthood's power. Akhenaten appointed himself sole high priest of a new monotheistic faith. This new religion saw the physical sun disk as the only symbol of divine power that the Egyptians should worship as their unique creator. The names of most of the other deities were removed from monuments. The court left Thebes, the city of Amun, and took up residence in the newly created capital of Akhet Aten in Middle Egypt near Hermopolis. There was newfound freedom from the old traditions in the fields of art, sculpture, architecture, and literature. Images became more naturalistic and architectural forms related more to human needs. This period lasted only 20 years or so. The new town of Akhetaten was abandoned in the time of the young Tutankhamun. The name of Akhenaten was obliterated and the old deities were restored to their former state. Everything went back to the polytheistic practices of prior periods. 19th and 20th Dynasties 1370 to 1307 BCE. As the dynasties changed, the throne passed to military leaders. The power first went to Horm Heb, Prime Minister of Tutankhamun, then to Seti I, and eventually to Ramses II. The Egyptian armies marched to Palestine and Syria to consolidate the weakened empire that was now threatened by the Hittites, a more powerful enemy than Thutmose III had ever confronted. The climax of this period was the long reign of Ramses II, which lasted 67 years. This king built more monuments that have survived than any other pharaoh. Even though Ramses had more than 100 children, he still outlived his 13 eldest sons. 
There were nine more kings following Ramses II, most of whom rule no more than a few years. Soon after his death, the country was attacked by a large confederation of dispossessed people from the eastern Mediterranean called the Sea Peoples. Merneptah and Ramses III successfully warded off the danger around 1185 BCE and helped Egypt to regain part of its glory and its empire. In the following period, during the reigns of Ramses IV to Ramses XI, there is evidence that Egypt suffered from severe economic difficulties such as inflation, famine, and political setbacks. People started to rob the tombs in the Valley of the Kings, the workers went on strike, and there were administrative and judicial scandals. Countless foreigners, including a large portion of people from the East, settled on the banks of the Nile as farmers, prisoners of war, or political refugees. The victories of this period resulted in the capture or recapture of rich Syrian cities. The conquering of these cities brought inhabitants and herds, as well as the imposition of an annual tribute payable by towns that sought the protection of Egypt against its enemies. This wealth poured into the royal treasury and into officials' pockets. The chief beneficiaries of these victories, however, were the deities who had given the pharaoh the power to conquer. One major change during the New Kingdom was the economic growth of the temples. Gifts of land also increased, along with the number of buildings. During this time, prosperous, learned scribes, for whom a book is better than a painted stele on a wall covered with inscriptions, took inspiration from the texts of the Middle Kingdom. The New Kingdom ended in crisis. The country split into two lands, one in the south ruled by the high priests of Amun at Thebes, and the other, a dynasty of weak kings at Tanis in the eastern delta. 